minutes left on the clock to set up the game-winning field goal on the Vikings in a game loaded with highlight plays held off Bill Belichick and the New England Patriots on Thanksgiving night for a 33-26 victory. Irv, what was the bigger statement win? Would you say it was oh. the Bills or the Vikes? Here again, I got to put the Vikings in that, th in, in, in that three-game stretch, those 11 days, you come over, you play the number one team in the AFC in Buffalo, and you beat them. Then you come get dismantled by the number one team in the NFC, the Dallas Cowboys, and you bounce back with one of the greatest coaches of all time, the guy, that, the greatest coach to ever coach the game, and he, and you, he puts you in a nail-biter, and you make the plays to win the game. You got to say it is absolutely the Minnesota Vikings, when, especially when you put what they've done over those last 11 days all together. And especially also, as much as we know, what we're watching right now, this man came out and showed out. Justin Jefferson, when does Bill Belichick ever allow your number one receiver to make those kinds of plays against him? And those plays you saw Justin Jefferson catch, you saw that was right between two guys. So he was being double team, triple team, and he still came up and made the play. And that was a home victory for Minnesota. I thought that was way more impressive than Buffalo's victory over, let me say this, the Detroit Lions. Let's stop playing people. You know what? I'm going to go with the Bills for this one. Um, you know, New England surprised me and impressed me with what they were able to do offensively. Um, initially, I thought that was a touchdown by Hunter, but you are right. If you make contact with the ground and then you don't maintain control to the, the official letter of the law, it was the right call by the officials. I think that was appropriate to say. Um, but they surprised me with how well they played. What I would say is that I didn't expect Minnesota to look as effective as they did offensively against New England's experienced defense, even though giving up that 97-yard kickoff return obviously was on special teams, and that was a negative. But I will tell you this. I'm going to go with the Bills for one reason and one reason only, playmaker, and I think you'll appreciate this. You just brought up Justin Jefferson. You know what I'm watching? I'm watching Stephon Diggs. And I'm watching the Man, way what? he is screaming at Josh Allen and his teammates, get me yeah. the damn ball. I'll get – I'll watch. The, target me. He's looking well, at it. McDermott and the brother. Target me. Go, come to me. You understand? The hell with McKenzie and what he's doing, Davis and what they – come to me. And that brother delivered. I mean, the numbers only say eight receptions <laughs> to 77 yards. But those was two big-time catches in the fourth quarter that he registered. I mean, he just said, yeah. "Here, I, I'm the man. I'm that dude. Now, Justin Jefferson has that ability. He didn't do it against Dallas with only three receptions for 33 yards, and I get all of that. But he showed up yesterday against New, last night against New sure. England, and I get that. But when we think about the Bills, and when we think about how they've been struggling over the last few weeks, and we think about, once again, Josh Allen and them committing, what is it, six turnovers in the last three, three, four weeks in the red zone? I mean, damn, it's bad, okay? It's really bad. And that's not going to get them to the Super Bowl. They better clean that up or Buffalo going to be home watching the Super Bowl with the rest of us. They better right. get their act together. But right. to know that they're going right. through those doldrums and for a wide receiver – we always see wide receivers, get me the ball, get me the ball. We could go through a laundry list, yourself included. But the reason why you're the playmaker and the reason why you're a Hall of Famer is because when you asked for it, when you demanded it, and they came well, you to you, you delivered. Play. You, you delivered. You got to make that play. You got to make, make that play. That play. And right, Stephon Diggs, you got to make that that's, play. It, it, <laughs> I'm saying to you, with Justin Jefferson, I saw a playmaker. Right. Don't get me wrong. The brother's special, and he's elite, and I got a lot of love for what I'm seeing from him. But when you talk about a dude like Stephon Diggs that is literally in everybody's face, come to me. Yeah. This is money time. I'm that dude. And they did. And he delivered in traffic, making sensational catches. I got to tell you, right. that is what champions are made of. If you're going to win the championship yeah. for the Buffalo Bills, Stephon Diggs has to be that guy. And yesterday he said, I know it. Now watch me show you. And then went out and wow. showed them. Yeah.
You can never, hey, show. You can never you, count you, them you, out. You, you even with Stephon Diggs, this is about to get down the field. Because you're, you're so right. You're so right on this, Stephen A. I mean, and you hit the nail on the head with what you, what you, when you're talking about a true number one. You have to have that ability to be selfless. You want to raise everybody up. But at that right moment, you got to be selfish, not selfless. I'm going to make this play. Throw me the ball. And I think, you know, or that's why I wasn't worried about Buffalo as, as much as everybody else was, because even the red zone mistakes have been aggressive mistakes. And I want Josh to stay aggressive. And that's what Stephon D has told him. Stay aggressive. Just come to me. Don't go to nobody else. Come to me, and that's your right. aggression and, will and work it, out. And, and that's the last big night. thing. That's the big thing. You can, you can, and you know this, you can ask for it. But to, you could do so timidly. Right. You could do so passively. You could do right. so respectfully. But he was in Cat's face. Come to me. Right. And delivered. I got Michael, this. when we're looking at all, all the big play receivers, and obviously we saw what you tweeted there, who do you think is the number one? Would you go Jefferson, C.D. Lamb, or would you go Diggs? Come on now. Well, all of them, all, all three of those guys are number ones. Uh, you know, really number I don't know one. about that. But, but each in a different category. Yeah, yeah, all three number ones. Now, no, let me tell you something. I don't know about that CD Lamb in, yet. In, in different categories. He's happy. CD Lamb is showing. CD Lamb is showing that you see his numbers over the last few weeks. He is clearly moving towards that number one. Now, now I, I understand your hesitation because he went, he had to go from being a number two to a number one while he went from his number one to a number two quarterback. For a while, he had to play with Cooper Rush. So let's, let's remember that. As he's trans transitioning from a number two to a number one receiver, he had to transition and make that transition. Lose Losing his number one quarterback and doing some of it with his number two. But now he's made that full transition. That's why I tweeted, you are watching a hatching of this number one receiver. Now, you ask me, out of all three of those guys, yeah. and all three of them, dude, they made some plays, man. Watch, if you go back and look at the catches all three of these team guys have made over the last few weeks, they've all been some incredible, incredible grabs, including that mm. non-touchdown grab by C.D. Lamb. But the one guy I still have to point to, I got Josh Allen. You probably go Josh Allen and, and Dak Prescott up here as a far as far as the partners that they have thrown to him. And, and made a Kirk Cousin just a tad below them as far as the partner Justin mm -hmm. Jefferson has thrown mm -hmm. to him. So out of the three, mm -hmm. I'm going to still take Justin Jefferson. I think the last couple weeks, the catches he's made, mm -hmm. it has been top of the world. I will say this to you. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I don't understand that. And now you got Josh Allen and Dak Prescott here. No, 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 no. I don't know what you're talking about yeah. in that regard. That's number one. You don't, I don't think they got better quarterbacks? You don't think they got better quarterbacks? No. No, that, you Dak Prescott ain't Josh Allen. Yet. No, stop it. Now, Josh Allen has struggled over the last few weeks or so, but we've seen Dak Prescott struggle for years. Stop it. It's not the same. That's number one. No, and not only that, three Josh, quarterbacks excuse, me, excuse me, Josh Allen has been in the AFC Championship game. I mean, we still wait for that from Dak. Stop. Stop it now. Okay, that's number one. Number two, don't mention CeeDee Lamb yet. I got uh, – the brother can play. He's no scrub. Eight straight weeks to start the season without one single 100-yard game. No, 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 no. He doesn't get – he's good. He doesn't get to get mentioned with Justin Jefferson and Stephon Diggs. You stop that right now. You stop it. Don't you even think about it. Stop that. Number two. Number three, Justin Jefferson is a special brother. And I understand that Dallas D slaughtered Kirk Cousins. I get all that. And I'm sure that played a role. But damn it all, I know is three receptions for 33 yards against those Cowboys. I ain't see that happen to Stephon Diggs. And then yesterday, what we saw when Detroit came roaring back, we saw Stephon Diggs again. I'm going to tell you, in terms of number one receivers, of that list that we got right there, because I would take Tyreek Hill, me personally, before all of them. I take Tyreek Hill before all of them, okay? But understand, of the list that's right there, all right, I would tell you Stephon Diggs comes first. Jefferson comes second, Lamb comes third. And by the way, Lamb, as good as he is, because he is good, I ain't going to throw that shade mm -hmm. on the brother. The brother can play. I'm not putting him in the same sentence as Tyreek Hill. I'm not putting him in the same sentence as Jamar Chase once Chase comes back. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. Okay. No. Okay, 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 no. okay, 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 okay. So, so, so you, you give no, no credit to anything to— Or A.J. Brown. No. 
You, you, give no, you give nothing to C.D. Lamb having to make this maturation without his quarterback I'm not all saying the way that. through. I just you, said you I give, give him love. I just said I give him love. He just not. I just said there's levels to this. Listen, there's plenty of people that are pros, right? There's plenty of people that are Hall of Famers at the wide receiver. They ain't the playmaker. I'm just saying, you can respect them and appreciate them, but understand there's levels to this. Mm -hmm. I'm saying when you bring up CeeDee Lamb, I'm thinking about Jefferson and Diggs. Yeah. I'm thinking about Tyreek Hill. I'm thinking about Jamar Chase. I'm thinking right. about A.J. Brown. No, CeeDee Lamb ain't on that level yet. No. But he did do a no. good job in the second half yesterday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. Michael. Yes, yes, yes. Michael. And, he, and, and all those guys you talked about have had their quarterback all year long. Yeah. They haven't missed time. Well, two have missed some time outside two. But the rest yeah. of the guys have had their quarterbacks all year long. Michael, before we let you roll and enjoy your post-Thanksgiving, I just want to ask you this, though. Are you concerned about the Cowboys' What's... penalties? Because that keeps happening, and it feels yeah. like that's their Achilles heel. Yeah. And they seemed a little jittery even in the yeah, second half yeah. when they got it done. Yeah, yeah, I am concerned about that, I, and, and I want them to clean that up. And that's why I, I, I don't know what Stephen A's talking about when you see Dak Prescott, the leader of that football team, stand at that podium and talk about how they're going to clean those things up and how they are going to focus on getting those they things right. They said it last year. He said it all start with him. It all oh starts my with God. him. It, it, it's what? just great leadership. So I know it, Dak. It, it, I know it, it, Dak That's why you got right. that smirk on your face because you know you're full of it. Right. You know you're full <laughs> of it. And, and, and see, and see what happens is, is that he plays because he is Thanksgiving weekend. Yeah. So he's home, right? And see, here's what's going happen, right? Before he go, before he go back to L.A., because he got a great show to do on Sunday mornings, here's the real deal, okay? What? He gonna go out, and and, 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 and the playmaker, you know what I'm saying, in Irvin, Texas, he gonna go out, and what he wants to do is be able to go out. I told Stephen A., I told, I got us, I got our back. Stop it. Stop that dribbling, <laughs> that so gibberish. Funny, You're non and nonsensical no. Listen, stuff. Man. They, they, they <laughs> committed all of those penalties in the postseason. They swore they were gonna clean yeah, it up, get, and they came in. We they were making clear. penalties in the preseason. In the preseason, and they right. still haven't cleaned up all these pre-snap penalties yeah. for crying out loud. Michael, even though, by like the way, the hold on, hold on, Molly. Even though, by the way, I actually don't it. hold it. I actually thought the holding penalty against Zach Martin was kind of bogus. Mm -hmm. I actually didn't think he deserved that. This is not a brother that gets called for holding penalties very often. I mean, he's one of the elite. But the point mm -hmm. is, at the end of the day, when you look at the Dallas Cowboys, the fact of the matter is penalties have been plaguing them. And remember, they invent ways yeah. to lose. It's not like they lose conventionally. Yes. It's usually a mistake. Well, it's usually a catch that wasn't a catch. Uh, 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 an ordinate amount of penalties, not being able to get off a snap in 13 I'm, seconds. I mean, they invent right. ways to fall. So let's remember all of that. Stop that nonsense with Dak. Right. And you heard so what he said and at the press conference. Stop it. But, but let's also remember how much room improve, how much room there is for improvement when you do yeah. correct all those things. Dallas is winning and winning well with those issues. Imagine if we snatch those issues off the table. Imagine. Then imagine, imagine what you have. Imagine. And this is what. So, so you are making my point for me. No, no, every team is going to work on their issues. Every no. team is working on I'm their making, issues. See, you Some ain't listening. working on their issues. You ain't and listening. And they still won't go anywhere. You ain't anywhere. listening. Dallas is going to work on the issues with a team to go to Super Bowl. That's my point to you. You're saying they're going to work on the issues. I'm saying they said that last year. And the same issue happened in the preseason. And the same issue has happened during the regular season. Evidently, they're not working on those issues. That's my point. Only you would twist it and try to turn it into a positive and be like, see, they're going to work on this. Imagine <laughs> if they did this. Well, I keep imagining it, but it doesn't happen. That's the point. That's the point. They don't address those issues. It's the same old, same old. That's my point. Oh, my gosh. Michael, I'll be back on your team on Monday. Hey, you know, hey, it was just rough hey, to lose on Thursday. I can't wait to be back there. I can't wait to get back Yeah, there. whatever. Maybe we can get them in a be better mood, man. Be careful what you wish for, baby. Be careful what you wish for. It's been hard on you lately, for. buddy. I know it's been hard on you lately. Yeah. I know it's been hard on you, but I'm going to let it's you cry right. right on this shoulder right here. Right on that one right patient, there. That's baby. a strong one. That's a I'm strong patient. one for you. That's I'm it. patient. <laughs> I'm patient. I can wait. I know what's coming. Y'all don't. And that's what I almost feel bad for y'all. Because okay. you thought y'all were crying okay. last year when the season ended. Imagine what the tears are going to be like this year. With oh, the higher yeah. stakes? Oh, yeah. Okay. The fall's going to be hard. God did it right. God did it right. The last place we won a Super Bowl will be the first, the next place we won a Super Bowl. And that will be Arizona, buddy. Take that one. How to long the ago bank. was that? Take How long that ago one was that? to the bank. How long ago was that?
Take Do you remember that one the year? The bank. Do you hey, remember the year? Hey, 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 hey. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah what I year was the it? Ring. I remember the year. Yeah, I remember what year the was year. it? What remember. year was it? It was '95. It there was '95. Here we go. I, I, I have the this ring. I was and, fresh and, out of college. And, and this year, I was fresh out of college. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's a young whippersnapper. There we go. In those Queen That's streets, right. you guys are hilarious. All right, Michael, enjoy the time with your family before you get back on the road. We'll be watching you Sunday. Happy we'll Thanksgiving, bro. All right, on man. first take in person All right, on Monday. Happy Thanksgiving, man. Can't Love wait, you guys. Bro. Love you guys, we bro. Happy Thanksgiving. Right. And we left your